Uh, that's all it is. I mean, which would you prefer during those calamitous years, 39 to 45? World War II, if I'm correct. Quite correct. And anti various pregnancy as well. Let's not be <laughs> Which would you prefer? The driving rhythms of a muddy waters and his baby blues fetus? Or would you prefer <laughs> the lovely lilting harmonies of Vera Lynn in her prime? Uh, I mean, it's a meaningless argument. I could say, where is your sepia Shakespeare? Where is your Nick Nijinsky? <laughs> Where is your mulatto uh, Mazorski? <laughs> <laughs> so which I could say, where is your white Al Johnson? <laughs> oh, he was white. <laughs> well, where is your white Cassius Clay? Muhammad Ali is the nomenclature that he preferred. <laughs> let us remember that our own Henry Cooper, OBE, right, if I'm not mistaken, had Ali in trouble on the ropes and down to seventh in the third, you see. And you also remember that the black people, for all their doobie ribbons, and their breasted dancing have not <laughs> produced a worthwhile, lasting civilization like Rome or England. Ah, but they have not spoiled <laughs> the tyrant of the proportions of thwarted painter Adolf Hitler. Not so fast, though. But it's a theory that Hitler was a black man who wiped up for social reasons, <laughs> using his own paintbrush and watercolours. Well, what evidence, uh, what evidence is there for that? Well, his moustache is the giveaway. The answer, my friend, is not blowing in the wind. <laughs> That's not blowing in the wind. His <laughs> moustache is not blowing in the wind. In all those newsreel photographs, did you ever once see it move naturally as if buffeted by a passing breeze? <laughs> no, not that I can recall. No, not that you'll ever see either. And the theory is that the moustache was not a moustache at all, but the only part of Hitler's black body that he failed to wipe up. Ah, hence it's unnatural lack of movement. A very persuasive argument. Very persuasive mm -hmm. argument, indeed. And think also of the Nazi salute. Nazi salute, my eye. That is the traditional greeting of the black pygmy to the giant Maasai tribesman. Who <laughs> his basic attempt to shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> No, it all hangs together. It all hangs together, yes. Well, even if ha Hitler was black, which I'm willing to take as red, I don't, think, I don't think this is a reason to condemn an entire race. Of course it's not, and I'll be the last to do so. I would eventually, but I'll be amongst the last. <laughs> what I'll ask you, Dad, very seriously, is this. If you had a daughter, which God forbid, if you had a daughter, I'm sure he will, but if you had a daughter, would you allow her to marry a person who wandered round covered in kiwi boot polish. <laughs> oh, of course, that bridge when I'll get to it. But um, I must tell you, Pete, that uh, being black, I feel much better in myself. I feel, I feel stronger, my teeth are whiter, there's a certain liveness in my gait, a certain animal power in my movement. <laughs> this is merely superficial. Beneath it all, you remain the same white, sluggish stud. <laughs> if you threw Gracie Fields into a bucket of coal tar, she would not emerge as Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> Young, gifted and black. That's where it's at. You're likely to remain that way as well. Have you read the warning underneath the tin? What's it say? This polish is long-lasting and deep penetrating. I can wash it off. Also, it is waterproof. <laughs> it doesn't apply to any part of the body other than the shoe. Oh. <laughs> I think you'll find it's probably in there for life. Oh. We'll have a wonderful time, of course, touring the world in a circus. The walking blackhead with the white body. <laughs> Trouble coming back, they'd have to repatriate your head and hands and not allow your body in as a dependent, I suppose. <laughs> Take a pinch of white man, and a bucket of black, take a bit of blue black.